Hello and welcome to Let's Play Black Legend with me, Bring It Down. Black Legend was released today, March 25th, 2021. It was both developed and published by Warcave. It is a turn-based strategy RPG with focuses on exploration and alchemy. Don't know how alchemy fits into the game mechanically yet, but I'm sure we'll be introduced to that very shortly. Don't know a lot about the game, I've seen some gameplay and that's it. I thought it looked really good. And so here we are. Let's jump on in to a new game. Alright, did not know this was going to pop up. What do we have here? Let's avoid custom for now. Let's see what the settings are first. Don't know what a Philosopher's Stone is, so I don't know if I want this setting. I'm going to keep it on. I can't make that call because I don't know what this is. I guess for new runs. In battle saving. Uh, single save mode. Let's keep that off. Yeah. The bane of Let's Plays is a single save mode. Because if it gets corrupted or something goes wrong, or your power goes out, or you know, anything, uh, you have to start from scratch. Don't know what locked in means. And then permanent death. I wouldn't mind having that on. I think. I don't, know. I don't think about the game, so maybe, maybe that's a bad idea. I'm going to keep it on normal, mostly for the single save mode. Tempted to do hard, but again, this is a huge turnoff for me. The game just came out, so there might be bugs, and I don't want to risk a single save. Same with custom. I don't want to accidentally break something in the game. So we'll start with normal and jump on in. There are a couple settings I'd like to change, but again, for the sake of the let's play, we're not going to. Oh, we get to make my character. I'll be a male. Let's start with our hair first. We have... Alright, kind of like... Oh, no, where was it at? Was it this one? That was not bad. Let's make it black, then facial hair. Hmm. We'll go with that. Seems good to me. Changed head a couple times. I wish he'd stop looking away from me when I'm trying to look at his face. Oh, uh, that works. Alright. So, I have an idea. I believe it's spelled this way? Is that Don Tanyon? It's supposed to be a play... No, this is an A, I think. There we go, that looks right. So one of the three musketeers is D'Artagnan, and I'm going to name him D'Artagnan. A play off of D'Artagnan. So this does take place in the 17th century. So I think it fits it. Uh, yeah, let's finalize our hero. The brutality of war spares none. And perhaps the survivors suffer the biggest consequences. The city-state of Grant enjoyed the protection of trade partners for centuries. And when that protection faded, as the banners of united invaders approached, the city turned to Mephisto instead. With his one hand, the legendary alchemist created a potent brew from which he unleashed a dreaded fog that blanketed the streets. With the other, he spread his gift of antidote to the citizens. But with his legs, he eventually left, and all that escaped Grant since that day were the sounds of agony and chaos. Such is the legend of Grant. Brave mercenaries, our victorious king has given you a chance of redemption. Your transgressions against the crown shall be forgiven. Deliver him this city filled with riches, free of the mists that once turned his soldiers feral. Grant him this wish, and he will grant you your freedom. I thought we were mercenaries. Are we free but under contract? I used a BSD to move around. You can use controller as well. I should have looked through all those. Alright. What do we have here? Movement feels a little stiff. I don't like how rigid his back is when he's jaunting around. 
Then maybe he's wearing like a corset or something underneath his clothes. It's keeping him his back straight. So I know you can find loot in the ground. Uh, that was in the gameplay that I saw, so I'm gonna keep my eyes open for that. All right, let's interact. Must be a little bit of a uh, mutant year zero road to Eden so far. I don't get why Johan is so bothered with you, Lord. Every new mercenary band he wants me to let in dies faster than the last one. Name's Martin. I would settle for more pleasant introductions, but now's the time for a more simple question. Why have you come here? Freedom. A royal pardon from the king? Well, I've seen my fair share of looters, treasure hunters, and idiots alike, but that's a new one. If you want to stay alive here, then ask Johan to join the Guilty Claw. Well, I'll take you there as long as you don't slow me down. Get those legs moving, it's not far from here. Okay. Does he join my party, or do I... Nope. Alright, let's go... Here we go. Obtain an item, a longsword. Oh, something back here as well. Alright, so I did have to be thorough. There's no sparkles. I thought I remember seeing sparkles in the gameplay I saw. It's been a little while, so... I remember misremembered that. Let's go around and... Vermilion has been added to your pouch. 500. Can I knock on doors? No. So hopefully this sounds okay. I had to turn down the music a bit because it was very loud. At least on the main menu. Here we go. 150 vermilion. And a leather tunic. Alright. Let's open up our inventory. Oh, so I do have a whole party here. Okay, cool. Uh, inventory, what do we have? So, yeah, the red indicates it's equipped. So, Philosopher's Stone, a powerful alchemical creation that can reawaken the dead. Revives the fallen unit restores 10% of their mi maximum HP. Who am I comparing this to? It's better across the board. Plus 8%, I assume, damage, precision. I don't know what the star means. It won't let me. Here we go. Still doesn't tell me. All right, I'm, I'm assuming there will be a, a tutorial ahead that will explain that. This is what I hope. Yeah, so I'm not comparing it to anything. They just have that stats across the board. All right. Then a tire. We did pick up a leather tunic. All right, here we go. So I can compare leather tunic plus three, I guess, movement and plus three percent health. Which is what I just picked up, so I don't need to change that out. Is there any detriment to wearing that? How about the metal armor that this guy has on? Minus 10% movement. Okay. Then the... Where's the sword at? Is there a penalty to dual wielding? Oh no, you have to have, I guess, a hoff offhand weapon, not a offhand weapon. Alright, we'll figure this out as we go. Won't move it, change anything yet. Let's see how combat works before I make decisions. I need to know what those stats mean. You'll have some stamina after your journey. Good. See this light? Means someone inside is willing to talk. Nervous fellow, but loyal. Keeps an eye out for the gates for new visitors. Ask him for the key to the gate there. We lock off a lot of things in Grant on Johann's orders. Believes it will prevent people from stumbling into places they've no business being. Sounds fair. You willingly entered this place? Should have taken the death sentence, friend. Much better way out. Grant is beyond saving, I tell you. If the fog doesn't kill you, the bleeding Mephistians will. Them nutters actually worship the fog and the madman that created it. Why I'm posted here? Simple cowardice. Useless in battle, just like most people indoors. Keep an eye out for lanterns. People hiding may have interesting things to tell. Could save your life someday. Off you go, then. That's an interesting mechanic. Looking for lights on in the Here's city. Here's the key to the little gate. No point keeping it locked when the cult controls the entire city. 
All right, attained customs key. I kind of wish that was a little bigger. I go to quick save. All right, let's go on through. More loot. So they just throwing loot at me. So contain the vitriol. What does that do? I figured that was a consumable. So there's only one per. I guess we should go ahead and equip that on everybody. I assume the tank would be best to have the Philosopher's Stone equipped on. Oh, they have abilities too. Again, I'll look at that once we enter combat. So I can get a good look at it and have a firmer understanding of what it's all supposed to do. Just my luck. My fisty and cultists up ahead. You lot, hope you haven't forgotten how to swing those weapons. Hard to forget something you've never done. Hey, your group with anything you found. Can't have you die this early. Take these daggers. It's always nice to have a rogue on hand. And this crossbow would do fine in the hands of a sharpshooter. Shoot down any stragglers from a safe distance. All right, new idea. Whoever gets Changing the crossbow. Your class will teach you new abilities depending on the weapon you've equipped. Keep using those abilities in battle to learn them forever. Passive abilities are learned by simply having them active in battle and performing actions. You can have free learned abilities from any class alongside the other ones. Remain versatile by swinging classes often and learning new abilities. Right, so it's kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics. Head on once you've sorted it all out. I can only distract them for so long, so don't take too long. All right, find all the relevant equipment for class and locks it for selection uh, to change your party. Ch okay. Change to unlock class automatically equips the best equipment for that class. Some equipment teaches active or passive abilities to that class. Every time using an active ability in combat, you gain some progress towards learning that ability. Passive abilities are easier to learn and simply require you to perform actions in combat. All right, once it's learned, you don't have to worry about having equipped anymore. So yeah, just like Final Fantasy Tactics. Or Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. Either or. And there's like an ultimate ability, they can't be cross-classed. Passive abilities also can't be cross-classed. All right, cool. Throwing dagger, some more vitriol. So mercenary, is the mercenary my class? And they do have stats. Still don't know what they mean though. So I assume in damage, accuracy, don't, uh, morale maybe, or leadership, movement, and health. So they probably do best with a crossbow. Which means I want to... Let's give all of my melee guys a ranged option. And then they get the Philosopher's Stones because they should be in the back line in combat anyway. That droning. is a little too reminiscent of my tinnitus. Does not open from this side. Alright, that's fair. What do we have over here? Anything of note or worth? No. Alright, it's like our first combat. Let's do it. Alright, so we can position our guys. That's good. I'll put him over here, I think. And then start combat. When the enemy spots you, combat starts. Units take turns and move and attack. Your turn is decided by your initiative. And your initiative is determined by your agility stat. Which is the movement or speed, I guess. A unit has action points and movement. Action points are used to perform attacks and abilities. Movement will let you move across the field. I want his shield. Between movement and actions as you like. Once you're out of both, your turn ends. Ending your turn without spending all action points makes your next turn come faster. When ending your turn, pick a direction to face. Attacking from the back or side would deal significantly more damage. Units with shields take even less damage from their left and front, while those with parrying daggers would perform a counterattack. Enough talk for now. Let me remind you how it's done. Oh yeah, they gave me daggers. I wonder if I could put those in the offhand. Missed my opportunity. 
These flanking and backstab bonuses only apply to melee attacks. Your prowess in battle will improve more quickly if you know how to exploit it. Okay, so I need to... Ranged attacks Oops, will always count as if they were performed from the front. It's your turn now. Show me what you're worth. Alright, I'm going to change the transparency on this text so I can actually see it. Yeah, I understand that. Cities of Vernon Cultists may have difficulty settings. Their activity can be reduced when you battle them. Before combat starts, you may freely place your units within the starting grid. Press the R button to rotate your units facing. Now that I know that's a thing. Alright, let's go here and... Was it a video or graph? Nope. Where's it at? I think I need to go this way. Sense it a little better. Let me make it a little darker, a little more opaque. There we go. All right, so I'm currently controlling this guy. So we have first aid, tend to minor wounds with basic linen bandages, restores HP to the target, chance of 50% to remove a random and negative status effect from the target. Move, and then catalyzing strike. Attack with a melee weapon, catalyzing bodily humors on the target. Deals damage to the target. Then vitriol, super concoction, restores 25% of your maximum HP when used. Then throwing dagger, a single balance blade that can be thrown to damage a distant enemy, and apply rubido. Alright, so let's move over here. Tell me how many action points it takes. I don't see a cost. Right, so we still have one more, and then we have three regular action points. This costs two. So let's go ahead and do this. Not super impressive. I could move back one if I wanted to avoid this person getting hit. I wonder if he can attack from diagonal. The way the, uh, he explained attacking from each side, I don't think that you can. Let's go ahead and end their turn. Of course, they bandage up. All right, here's my character. Uh, I guess we can move him over here. I don't want to attack from this side, though. Let's actually move here. So I want to attack the guy with his shield on his left side like that. All right, so they also have catalyzing strike movement. What do we have here? Stomach punch. Strike the target in a vital spot to promote alchemical imbalances. Deals damage to the target. Apply stacks for Rebido on the target. Scales of strength. First aid, same as the other person. Rock throw. Pick up a stone and throw it at the target. Deal damage to the target. Apply stacks of Negrito on the target. Scaling marksmanship. Okay. Well, I'm just going to smack this guy in the back, I think. Oh, this has a chance of 50%. I don't know, that's the uh, first aid. Let's punch him in the back. Doesn't do a ton. But it's a debuff. And I can also do this after that, so. Why not? Then end their turn. I probably don't have to move him, right? Oh, can I move up here? Let's go up here and see if this does anything. Maybe improves our chance to hit. Does this show us a chance to hit? I didn't see anything. Breakdown, base damage, 8. Marksmanship, 112. Total damage, 9. Critical damage, 18. Alright, let's do it. And I guess, end his turn. Why would you run up and throw... Uh, whatever. You know what? I'm not going to complain. Let's move this guy behind the shield guy. Start whittling him down. He also has first aid and rock throw. And the same abilities across the board. Let's smack him in the back. I should have... Oh, no, it cost two. Never mind. Don't need to throw a rock. And his turn? Why would you not focus on the same guy? Yeah, whatever. Alright, strike this guy from the side. He's gonna get to go again. Wow. Some decent damage for a counterattack. I wonder if there's attacks of opportunity. I should have tested that. 
This seem like a game that would have attacks of opportunity. But you never know. Oh, here's he going after. Good, yeah, go after the NPC that I don't think is part of my party. I will take that all day. I do want that shield, though. What am I having a staunch shield wall? And let's stomach punch this guy, and then we can attack him. After the counterattack. He didn't counterattack us the first turn. Maybe it's because we got him from behind and not this side. Doesn't matter, he's dead now. He'll never counterattack again. We're gonna end our turn. I'm assuming we either heal outside of combat or we can use the vitriol outside of combat, so I don't have to worry about using it in combat and wasting action points. Alright, let's see if we can take this guy down. One more turn ought to do. I wonder how often we're going to have guest characters in combat with us. I've seen worse. This way now. There's more cultists ahead. Good opportunity to see if you remember how to use your body alchemy in battle. Apologize if you hear any background noise. Take these throwing knives. Like regular equipment. Because, uh, quick for the neighbors aren't remember. the greatest. <laughs> Consumable items can only be used once. But don't cost any extra action points to use. Keep track of them. They can be real tie turners in battle. It's like they wait to start tap dancing lessons and start vacuuming as soon as I start recording. So I usually record at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Alright. So you just stand there until. Okay. Interesting. Let's see if we can find some more loot. Higher vitriol. Alright, let's look at our health. So we do not heal outside of combat automatically. We do gain experience. Anything back here? Yep. A grenade? Alright, well, let's grab that. Probably be worth equipping on at least one person. Applies Citronitas. We'll equip it on my main character. Alright, East, City Center, West, Merchant Guild. It's not open from this side. Of course not. What was I thinking? Alright, nothing back there. Looks like we have another fight ahead of us. Let's go back here first and look for more loot. Like this, we got Jennifer, Balancing Pellets, and Bloodstained Nail. Go ahead and put that on my main character for some extra damage. So Jennifer, an alcoholic beverage that clears the system, removes all temporary negative status effects. Bouncing pellets, small pills that balance the humors in the body, removing all humor stacks. And I didn't see the bloody nail. It's a key item. So bloodstained nail, a rusty nail with dark bloodstains around it. Using these to nail a coin to a quarter tree is believed to heal any ailment. Then customs key. Key to the gates of the customs office near the city gates. Every person in wagon was checked for contraband before these gates to prosperity would open. Those who left through it in the days when the fog was still under control did so after thorough search for hidden antidote. For you see, such secrets cannot carry, be carried out of the city. Alright, some vermilion and a flash grenade. Let's turn into Rainbow Six Siege. What do we have here? A black pearl. Jack Sparrow would be jealous. It's a flash grenade containing mixture of gunpowder and magnesium. Deals damage in an area, applies albedo, and inflicts blindness. Black pearl increases damage against targets with negrito stacks by 10% for every stack. What applied that? Was it... There was a... Oh, I think it's the, the rock throw applies that, right? Yeah. So may as well equip that. Yeah, how do I select? Let's select class. What do we have here? 
So mercenary, for merchants looking for protection to warlords looking to increase the... Don't scroll down. Warlords uh, looking to increase the size of their armies. These men and women are, are yours... Stop scrolling down, please. All right. Are yours for hire given the right amount of coin? While capable of wielding just about any weapon, the mercenary pales in comparison to more specialized classes, employing only very basic techniques in battle. All their growth is D. All right. Sharpshooter. These marksmen live on the edge of the battlefield. But very few miss... I'll wait for it to scroll back down. I'm not a fan of this whole scrolling thing. Let me scroll by myself. But very few mistake the distance for disinterest. Using a long, large range of crossbows and rifles, the sharpshooter picks off targets with ease before swiftly moving to... Uh, where's it at? Moving to the next vantage point. Ineffective at close range, the sharpshooter's defense consists mostly of mercilessly shooting down opponents before they can ever reach them. Then the rogue... Didn't mean to do that. The rogue, thief and scoundrel are titles happily worn by rogues all over the world. Very few move more swiftly and adeptly. And what they lack... I'll wait for it to <laughs> scroll back down. I'm not a fan of this. And what they lack in physical strength, they make up for by striking where it hurts most, when it hurts most. Getting in and out quickly is their only means of defense, as well as employing the constant stream of adrenaline in their veins to evade incoming harm. So what's the growth on the rogue? See, just let me scroll by myself. I don't like this auto-scrolling thing, because I can't read it out loud fast enough, and then I can't see the skill growth when I want to. So yeah, we'll stick with rogue on this guy. We'll keep mercenary. Uh, they'll go to sharpshooter, I think. Since that's what they're using. What do we unlock with the rogue? Venom sting. Attack with a weapon coated in venom, poisoning the target. Deals damage to the target. Applies stacks of albedo on the target. Inflicts poison status effect. Yeah. Kidney shot. Deals damage to the target. Applies stacks of negrito on the target. Which works well with the black pearl. So we'll keep that. And we'll keep those guys as mercenaries for now. Until they master those other abilities. Then we open the way back to this. This is back where we came from. Is there a map? I don't see one. So, let's proceed to next combat. And... Do we have time? Yeah, we got time. Let's do more, one more combat. Then we'll wrap up the episode. Alright, so let's move you up here. I don't know if that actually helps or not. I'm gonna pretend that it does. And everyone else will just stand right there. You will not last long without loving your body, Alchemy. There are four bodily humors, each represented by a color. Red, black, white, and yellow. Used to be a real science. Some of these abilities are the more colors. That will imply stacks of imbalance for that humor. Once the right amount has been applied, you can catalyze them. I'll apply Negretto, a black color, with a rock. Then I throw a knife to apply Rubedo, the red color. Catalyzing strike will catalyze the two into a crimson catalyst. <laughs> Building stacks and catalyzing them is the best way to deal damage in combat. But keep an eye on your own units. Cultists also know how to fight this way. Doesn't sound like Remember fun. Remember that white and red do not match. Neither do black and yellow. Any stacks that don't have a match will remain on the target. Don't disappoint me. Use those knives and rocks to finish quickly. Okay. Aquaman's most efficient way of dealing damage in battle. Use abilities to apply colored humors on the enemy. Then combine matching pairs with catalyzing attacks. Rubido is red. Negrito is black. Make the Crimson Catalyst, Rubido Red, and Citronitas Yellow make the Bronze Catalyst. Albedo White, Negrito Black make Silver, Albedo... Okay, this is telling me all the combinations. The intensity of a Catalyst is determined by the amount of combined humors. For example, two Albedo and two Negrito make two Silver Catalysts. Higher intensity Catalysts deal more damage than individual ones. Unused humors remain on the target after catalyzing. Find trinkets and equip them to trigger additional effects when catalyzing certain elements. Some enemies have weaknesses to certain catalysts. Read the beast area to learn about them. Alright, cool. So there is a lot more to this combat than I was expecting. Alright, so what do we have here? I have poison. I can only hit one at a time, so we're not going to bother with that. Let's move forward. 
In fact, I'm just going to end his turn here, because he can't get into the combat. I thought he had rock throw. I guess not. Okay, let's move back here. I'm going to hit him with a throwing dagger, because that's what they want me to use anyway. This is what? Citrito? No, Rubito. I don't have anything that triggers Rubito, so I'm not going to bother with that. We're just going to strike him from behind. I should have gone after this guy. He's almost dead. So snipe, take precise aim at a vital organ to damage the target. Deals damage to the target, apply stacks negrito on the target. So we'll hit this guy with that. Because we do have something on my main character that triggers that status or that humor. So that's what I'm gonna go for on this guy. Also we all we are all healed up. Don't know if anything specific caused that. So you going after my crossbowman? Nope. A rock throw also puts Negrito on here, so let's put that on this guy. Then we'll move over here, I think. My main character should be able to finish this guy off. Because he has, where is it at? Kidney shot. It applies, no, it applies stacks of it. Maybe catalyzing strike? It only cost one. So yeah, I can do this and then catalyzing strike. Right? Out of range. What? How's he out of range? Doesn't tell me why I can't hit him. Do I have to move back? I don't understand why that's out of range. But we'll move over here and try it. Or not. I don't know why that's out of range. Why is everything out of range? can't target this guy with my character. Um, I guess I'm going to end my turn because I can't do anything. Maybe next turn I can. I don't know. I'm going to shoot him then I have my character move away from this guy that looks like he's beelining for him. Let's get back here. Yeah, I don't know why I can't target this guy. It says out of range. He's got a melee weapon. He's standing right beside him. Alright, let's go ahead. How much does first aid cost? Two. Not worth doing. We're just going to move and strike this guy from this side, I think. Catalyzing strike. He's got... Two melee weapons, so I have no idea what's causing that. Alright, let's end their turn. So it looks like they only have three stacks of each type of humor. 18 damage. Oh, he's facing the wrong way. That's on me. I'd really like to hit this guy from behind with my main character on his next turn. He's going to hit him with a rock. And end his turn. Oh, thanks, buddy. Sweet, he heals me. Thanks, Martin. I wonder if I can change my character's names. I didn't look at that. I'm not super worried about it. Let us... Please hit this guy. There we go. 
35 damage. Hot dog. It works. You know, sometimes. Can he strike this guy? Nice. Yeah, I don't know why I couldn't hit him when he was over here. Start wheeling the guy with the shield down. Where's he going? He's going after my crossbowman. No, he's not. The movement doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But you know what? That's okay. Another level up. Main character, let us move over here. Actually, let's move behind him. Do a kidney shot. How's that out of range? In what world is that out of range? Can I hit him with this? This? I think it's because we're in the spawn zone, maybe? And it's saying that we're out of range? I mean, it's wrong, so I'm not super keen on that. Just keep whittling this guy down. Let's move over here. And strike this guy. Perfect. Right, so we well I we can't really keep him in place because he's there's no attacks of opportunity. Yeah, so this turn I can probably hit him with my main character because he's not in that spawn zone. I'm assuming that's what's causing that. All right, so I'm gonna try and kidney shot him. And then catalyzing strike. Only 15 damage. Not the greatest. If we finish him off this turn. He's out of range because he's right beside him. That makes sense. Let's come up here and then shoot him with our snipe ability. Nope, he's still out of range. Why is he out of range? It made sense when we were standing right beside him. Oh no, screw it. I'm just not gonna bother. <laughs> I don't know what's causing that. Like catalyzing strike. The entrance to the merchant skilled is up ahead. You go on first. Unless I've impressed on you enough to warrant a spot amongst your crew. I mean, I'm not gonna turn you down. Oh, I sent him to the barracks. Okay. He's level three. Let's level up the guys I currently have in my party. What does he have? A black pearl? Just because he has a black pearl, I'm going to take him so I can at least unequip it. Uh, let's see. What are his stats? 17, 15, 17, 19, 18. Yeah, we're going to swap this guy out. Don't know where he how he knows where the barracks are. Oh, no, he just stopped. I he's going to dart off to the barracks. I'm like, how does he know where they're at? We just got to the city. Also, I didn't check this out. Cultists don't knock on doors. Who are you? Well, unless you're here with food or antidote, piss off. Let a man and his family starve to death in peace. Alright, that's going to do it for the first episode of Black Legend. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.